people had. And the one who is jazzy, see, he's cold, he's dry as it reads. He doesn't ever read the Quran. He's a hafiz, but he never goes over it, never reads it. He, when Ramadan comes, he doesn't want to pray with it for people. So that's the way that Allah has raised a person who memorizes the Quran. He's an individual that you have to respect him. So when we came out today for today's introduction, those people who sat here, some of them memorize the Quran. The Imam, the brother who read, what's his name who read the Quran today? Surah Luqman. Bashir, masha'Allah, read the Quran. I listened to that Quran and I had hasid. I had I'm a reaver. Ya Laytani, oh I wish I could read that Quran. I wish that man was in my masjid for Salatul Fajr. Because he makes you want to listen to the Quran. MashaAllah. So when I see him, and I'm walking out with him and others, I don't walk in front of them. Listen to what I'm about to tell you. Abu Huraira, he saw a man with another man. Abu Huraira, I'm going to ask you if I ask you, what happened with Abu Huraira? It's a question. Abu Huraira was sitting with one man and another man. Abu Huraira said, what is that man's relationship to you? He said, that's my father. Abu Huraira said to him, listen to me. Don't you ever call that man by his first name. Don't you ever walk in front of that man. And don't you ever sit down before he sits down. I'm going to say it again. What's his relation? That's my father, my dad. Not my mother. Your mother, your mother, your mother. Who's that man? That's my father. Okay, you listen to me. Don't you ever call him by his first name. And don't you ever walk in front of him. And don't you ever sit down before he sits down. That's your dad, man. And even if he divorced your mother and he wasn't on the scene, that's your dad. If it wasn't for Allah and then him, you wouldn't be here. So the one who is older, the one who's the father, the one who memorizes the Quran, we shouldn't walk in front of them. We shouldn't talk to them in any way. Why? Because Allah has raised them. And those of you who are fathers out there, and I just said what I said, you like those words, and rightly so. But why don't you respect the one who memorizes the Quran? Why do you only want your son and daughters not to call you by your name and to respect you? Which is good, that's your heart. But why don't you respect the Hufav of the Quran? That's again an example of cherry picking from the religion. Cherry picking. I like this so I'll take it. But I don't like that so I won't take it. Let's move forward and we're almost done. Listen to me. Put your hand up. If you heard of Abdullah ibn Abbas, put your hand up. If you never heard of Abdullah ibn Abbas, put your hand up. Some of you didn't do either one. What, what, what was your situation? If you heard of Abdullah ibn Abbas, put your hand up. Put your right hands up. Put your right hands up. The right hand in Islam, Rasulullah used to love the right. He used the right for good things. He didn't use the left for anything but dirty things. In the masjid, put the right hand up. In this classroom, they ask, who knows? Put your right hand up and you'll get rewards for just loving the right. The left is for the dirty things, the bad things, like cleaning yourself. The other right, little homie. The other one, man. Yes, that one. Abdullah bin Abbas, many of you think when the Prophet died, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, you think he was an old man. Abdullah bin Abbas was 17, 18, 19 years old when Rasulullah died, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. But although he was that young, he used to sit with the companions. And why did he sit with the companions? Because he understood the Quran. He was the most knowledgeable from them as it relates to the Quran. So Umar would allow him to sit in his presence. 
because he's been raised up. There's another companion. His name is Amr ibn Salama. Amr. If you just say Amr, if I ask you Amr, just say Amr. His name is Amr ibn Salama. I'm going to say his name, you say Amr. Amr. Together, together. This is not Sufi dhikr. Together. Amr. Amr. One more time, fellas. Slow down. Pump your brakes. Breathe with the group. Al ittihad. Al ittihad. Amr. Amr. Good job. There's a companion. His name is Thumama. Thu, Thumama. Say Thumama. Thumama. Thu, Thu, not Su. Thumama. Thumama. He's a tremendous companion. I gave a lecture about him in his Islam. His name is Thumama ibn Ufal. When I ask such a question at the end, I ask the people in that audience, what was his name? What was the man's name, that companion? One boy said, Obama. I didn't say his name was Obama, man. I asked, what's his name? The other brother said, yo mama. I tell you, no lie. That said, Obama, that one said, yo mama. I didn't say this or that. So I just told him his name is Thumama. The next one said, pajama. I just, you know why? You know what? You know why? You know why? They were not paying attention, man. He just said a word that rhymed with the word. Pay attention. Hey, what's the man's name? The young boy, what's his name? Amr ibn Salama. He said, one time my father and his people, my people, we went to Medina to visit Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And we went there to learn our religion. And we stayed there for a number of days. And then Rasulullah he looked at us and he said, it's probably you people are missing your families, your wives and your children. Because he was merciful, man. He was easy with the Muslims. What's this Dawah of a Shidda, man, that these people have? This Dawah that makes them fear. I went to Jamaica the last week I've been in Jamaica. An island, some Jamaicans in Jamaica are poor. They hate Islam. Many of them. If they see a woman with niqab, some of those Jamaicans will let her know, I don't like you. But then we have brothers who are there who are supposed to be Salafi and claiming Salafi, and inshallah they are, they are. But all they have to offer is, don't listen to him, don't listen to him. He's a yahi. Where's the gentleness of Al-Islam? وَمَا أَرْسَلْنَاكَ إِلَّا رَحْمَةً لِلْعَالَمِينَ that's our Nabi. فَبِمَا رَحْمَةٍ مِّنَ اللَّهِ لِنْتَ لَهُمْ وَلَوْ كُنْتَ فَضٍ غَلِيذَ الْقَلْبِ لَنْ فَضُّوا مِنْ حَوْلِ يَا مُحَلِّ I think that you people are missing your babies and your wives. Go back to where you come from. Go back and be with your families. And when it's time for the Salat, one of you should make the Adhan. And when it's time for the Salat, after the Adhan, let the one who memorized the most Quran lead. So they left. It was time for prayer. They looked around and they saw the one who memorized the Quran the most. They found the one who read the Quran the most was Amr. He was only seven years old. If you're seven years old, put the correct hand up. If you're seven years old. A little man, the other hand. If you're seven, put your right hand up. My man Qasim, who just came here, is six years old. Qasim just came here. Abshir's son. Amr was one year older than this little boy, and he led those companions in prayer. They were so poor that he had one thobe. If you have more than one thobe, put your hand up. If you have more than one, that man, the boy had one thobe. That's it. When he made sajda, his thobe came up. One time, one of the Muslim ladies saw that his thobe was short, and when he made sajda, his thobe came up. The lady said to the men, why don't you people buy a thobe for your kari? And the Muslims put their money together and got the boy a thobe. He said when they gave him the thobe as a gift, he was never happier, except when he accepted Islam, he was happy, the second occasion he was most happy when he got this new thobe. 
So it's our responsibility to help the imam. Don't let the imam be a person who has to walk to the masjid or be late for Juma. His wife is having a baby. A baby. We have to take care of his kids. Because that's how the companions were with the one who memorized the Quran, Amr ibn Salama. So what's the point? Abdullah ibn Abbas, young. Amr ibn Salama, young. And yet, they had the right to sit with the people who were older. They had the right to be looked at with respect, although they were young. Now I'm gonna end this talk by just giving you guys some advice. Now you're not responsible for remembering anything from the advice. What I just told you just now is what you're responsible for, and that's it, 60 pounds. My first advice to this community is, it is topmost priority for the administration here, the idara here. And this administration has a lot of tahdiyat. I'm a person who can read the room. I can read the room. And I know this community, it could be a vibrant community, but the leadership here has a big, tall order to get this community in shape. I can see that. I can see that. And part of the problem is, we don't have enough people stepping up to do their responsibility. We don't have anything in Islam that's known as a sideline Muslim where you just sit on a sideline and you don't have anything to do. Back there in the UK, I was the imam in a place in Liverpool. Many Somalis live there. Mr. Rahma. There was a soccer player. His name is Sadi Mani Sadio. Sadio Mani. Played for Liverpool United. That man was making about 900,000 pounds every week. Some crazy amount of money to kick a ball. Soccer. Pay attention, man. He came to the masjid after Salat al-Asr when nobody was around to clean the masjid's toilets. To clean the toilet of the masjid. And he's making that much money. And you can't do something? You can't go into the toilet and clean the toilet? I'm talking to everybody here. You don't find it. Don't just put it on the administration here. That administration has a tough job to do because I know the aqliya of our community. The, pro the Prophet says وسلم, that the people are like 100 camels. You can barely find one camel suitable to ride. There are a lot of people, but where is the camel that you can ride? So my encouragement is not to put anybody down, I'm telling you, get in where you fit in. Especially some of you people who have, have experience with IT. This masjid should be up on this social media. So that people can know what's available here. More has to be done in Masjid Ibn Taymiyyah. By the admin, by the women, by the youngsters, by the elders. So my first advice from the most important responsibilities of this admin is that you people connect the hearts and the minds and the spirit of these Shabbat with the book of Allah. That that's our destor. We're in America. We ain't going nowhere. We're not second class citizens. We stand up straight with our backs straight and we say democracy, democracy. But our constitution first and foremost is this Quran. The Prophet said, Al Islam, Ya'la, Wala, Yu'la, Alihi. Nothing goes over Islam. So, Abu Sama, who are you? I am a Muslim who's African American. And I'm a doctor. In that order. I'm a Muslim who is a Muhandis. And I'm Somali. I am a Muslim first before I'm anything else. Before I'm an American, Africa, any of that stuff. So we have a responsibility. Connect your kids with that book. 
And don't let the Quran just be something. You put it in the highest part of the room and that's it. Allah has commanded us, اِتَّبِعُوا مَا أُنزِلَ إِلَيْكُمْ مِنْ رَبِّكُمْ وَلَا تَتَّبِعُوا مِنْ دُونِهِ أَوْلِيَا كَلِيلًا مَا تَذَكَّرُونَ Follow, ya Muslims, follow what was revealed to you by your Lord. The Quran and the Sunnah. And don't follow the awliya. We got to connect the people to the Quran so that, hey, my man, pay attention. When the boy takes a position and the girl takes a position, we say to them, what's your proof? He doesn't say, the sheikh said, the sheikh said. The sheikh is the delil. The sheikh is not the delil. The sheikh is like this light. The shaykh and the ulama, they come on like the light and they help us to see the Quran. They help us to understand. But that light over there, it died. That light over there is flickering. That light over there, you can turn it on and off. You can shut it up. It's not the goal and the objective, that light. The goal and the objective is that Quran. So people claiming salafiyya and the delil is the sheikh said? No. We connect these people to the book of Allah. Reading it, contemplating it, respecting it, standing up for it, dying for it. Now listen, listen to what I'm gonna tell you. My last advice and I'm done. Listen to this advice. Listen to what's going to happen. The Prophet says, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Yadrusu al Islam kama yadrusu washufoba hatta la yudra ma siyam wala saqat wala salat wala nusuk wala sadaqa wa yusra ala kitabi lahi fi laylatin wahida hatta la yabqa fi al ardi minhu ayah wa tabqa tawaifu min al nas a sheikhu kabir wal ajuz yakulun أدركنا آباءنا على هذه كلمة فنحن نقولها لا إله إلا الله. Listen to this hadith أمة الإسلام. He says صلى الله عليه وسلم that al Islam is going to fade away the way the embroidery of a thobe fades away. I wore this thobe it was brand spanking new. On the day of the Eid, last Ramadan, last Ramadan, the day that my son Abdurrahman died, the day before the Eid, this was a brand spanking new fold. It was blue. It was fresh and crisp. I was rocking it. I went to the to the Eid ground. I was in my. I was like just in my stuff. I was like, look at my thobe. It was blue. It was nice. This thobe is faded now. The color. It gets worn, it gets dirty, I wash it. Worn, dirty, I wash it. Worn, dirty, I wash it. The ink keeps going, going, going. If I have anything on it, it starts to rip. Until after two or three or four years, this thobe, you won't even recognize it compared to the first day. It's now, that's what's gonna happen. And it's gonna get to the point where the Muslims are not going to know what fasting is. They won't know what Salat is. They won't know what Zakat is. They don't know what Hajj is. And then the Quran, the Quran will be raised up and taken off and out of the world in one night. The Muslims won't know. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. With an ayat of all of the surahs of the Quran except one. That's an ayat. Muslims won't remember Alif Lam they won't know this ayah. And the only people or the people that will be on the earth will be an old man and an old lady. And they'll say, you know, we found our parents, they were Muslims, and they said, La ilaha illallah, and that's what we're saying. But there's no salah, there's no zakah, there's no hajj, there's no jihad, there's no hijab. There's nothing. There's no masjid. All the Muslims of that time will know is La ilaha. Can you imagine? And that's how the world is going to end. Where there won't be anyone on the face of the earth saying Allah, Allah. That's going to happen to our ummah. 
We have children right here who parents allow them to do birthdays and blow out a candle. Blown out a candle is kufr and shirk. We have people here who do, ha they do Halloween. Halloween is kufr and shirk. The jinn and sicker. And we go to watch the movie and we believe in that mess. We have people right here, Muslims, Muslims right here, right here, who believe in Valentine's Day. Kufrun wa shirkun. It's how we are. And every year it gets worse and worse and worse. In 2013 when I came, I asked that boy, he knew 13, 15 of his fathers. Today, the boy only knew one. So my advice to you is, just imagine, and I'm done. If I worked in the Islamic bank, the real Islamic bank, no Reba, we help the Muslims. And I worked eight hours in that bank. I'm not gonna let anybody rob the bank while I'm working. Because it's the Muslims money. Anybody try to come to rob the bank while I'm the security guard, I'm gonna put some lead in his head. I'm gonna deal with him. Not on my watch. You shouldn't be coming. I'm gonna blast you. Because this is the Muslims' money. This is Allah's money. You're not gonna do this while I'm working. I take pride. The same thing. We all have to take pride that we can't allow the Quran to be raised up during our time. While well, it's your watch. That's my advice to you. Stop lollygagging. Stop lollygagging. So now, leave these people who are busying you with a lot of kalam, you younger brothers. Ajarh with tajrih. Kalam fari. I don't even say ajarh with ta'adil. There's no ta'adil there. It's ajarh with tajrih. Busy yourself with knowledge that will help you. Memorizing the Quran. Learning how to read the Quran. Wallahi, you'll be able to measure how you are developing, especially for the revert. You didn't know the huruf, now you know the huruf and you can connect the huruf. That's beneficial knowledge. As for, he's this, he's that, he's that, what? Man, that's kalam farih, and it hurts. It has nothing to do with what we're trying to do in growing our community. So now we're gonna ask three questions, inshallah. And I'm gonna choose this brother right here and that's it. And that's because I'm impressed with his summit. His summit, mashallah. His stole. Stand up, young man. 60 pounds. Wallahi. Right there, man. Stand there, man. Do you have any sisters back there? I'm going to add 60 more. Three sisters. Each one get 20. The ayat of the Quran said, Rijalu kawa muna ala nisa bima faddalallahu bi ba'duma na ba' wa bima anfaku min amwalihim. You're responsible for your sisters. You have to give them chat and help them out and defend them. So you're going to make this money for them, you're going to make your parents proud. Inshallah. What's your name, amigo? Uh, Umar. Umar. So, Umar, what is the name of those two companions that were young? and they were raised up by the Qur'an. Abdullah ibn Abbas and Amir ibn Sam. Good job, good job. Do you guys agree? Yes. All right, brother. What companion said three things to the boy and I was pointing at you? What's the companion's name and what three things did he say? Listen, listen. Abu Bakr Sadiq. Abu Bakr Sadiq. Bong, sit down, man. Ah, oh, Umar. Good try, good try. The hadith said, as Sa'id, man The intelligent one, the good one, is the one who learns from others. If the teacher says, hey, sit down. Don't you keep talking, and then he has to say to you, you got to learn from him. He gets up and gives the wrong answer. Don't you get up and give the same wrong answer. Got to learn from what he just made a mistake in. Stand up, little man. This is the last one. How much time we got? All right, man. What's your name, boy? Suhaib. Suhaib. Oh, I met you, Suhaib. Take it with your right hand, man. Good job. That's the left hand of doo-doo hand, man. Come on, now. Where you going? Where you serious. Going? What was the first answer? The first answer? Those two companions, what were their names? Amir 
and Abdullah. Amr, Amr, and Abdullah ibn Abbas. Second, who was the companion who said, what's that man's relationship to you? He said, it's my father. He said, don't do this, don't do that, don't do Who's that companion and what did he say? It was Abdullah. Nah, man. Sit down. One more, one last one, just to make it uh, odd number. Hey, hey, hey! Keep it quiet, man. Keep it quiet. And this is one of the reasons why it's not always fair that the sisters don't have an opportunity to participate. They don't have an opportunity to participate because I know most of them probably know, but the sister has to get with the program. This is just how it is. Don't you become a woman talking about I want to be a man. Don't you become one of them women talking about I'm a feminist. Don't do that. Say, the brothers are here, that's my brother, maybe Allah give. Don't be talking about I want to get up here and talk. I don't know who. Man, we going over. Little man, you the last one. You the last one. Stand up. You are the last one. He didn't even know it. Huh? He didn't even know it. He had his... All right, right. Go ahead, brother. Are you sure? Yes, I'm very sure. What's your name, Yahya? All right, my man. Who was the companions, the two men? Hurry up. Abdullah ibn Abbas and Ahmed ibn Salama. What's the name of the companion who said that to the man? And what's the three things he said? He said to not disrespect your father. Don't disrespect your father. He didn't say that, man. He didn't say that, man. He said to him, it was Abu Huraira. He said, don't call your father by his first name. He said, don't walk in front of your father. He said, don't sit down before your father. All of that means don't disrespect him. It means that. But that's not what I said. That's not what I said, man. That's not what I said. I'm going to choose you, the last one. Stand up. Forget those two. You, my man. You, my man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's the last one. My I'm just going to ask you one question. If you get this one question, well, wahi, I'm going to give you the 60 pounds. Where's the 60 pounds? Last question. Forget the first two that three of your ashab can answer. Last question. What was the fourth hadith I used in the talk? Yeah, man, don't move your eyes like that. You're responsible. The fourth hadith. All right, man, I'm keeping my money. Salaamu alaikum. 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 Salaamu